everyone, and welcome to Reliever Roundup and Bullpen Bonanza. I'm your host, Evan Thompson, Senior Editor and Diamondbacks Writer at Last Word on Baseball, author of A Complete History of the Major League Baseball Playoffs. This book is the only history in existence of the epic battles, both postseason and tiebreaker, used to determine the pennant winners in the National League and the American League. Volume 1 covers the five pre-divisional tiebreakers as well as the American League and National League Championship Series from their inception in 1969 through 1976. This book is available from my publisher, Book Baby, as well as other book retailers including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Target. I'll put links to each in the description box below this video so you can order your copy today. In today's episode, we are going to talk about the best way to measure late inning effectiveness of relievers, the goose egg. Right now, the mainstream statistic for measuring this is the save, but the save has several problems. And for middle relievers, all we have is the hold. The hold has problems also. First, let's take a look at the qualifications for a save. First, he is the finishing pitcher in a game won by his club. And, two, he is not the winning pitcher, and three, he qualifies under one of the following conditions. He enters the game with a lead of no more than three runs and pitches for at least one inning, or he enters the game regardless of the score with the potential tying run either on base, at bat, or on deck, or he pitches for at least three innings. Let's look at a scenario with a save that is rather far-fetched, but still could happen and would still give the pitcher a save. Say a pitcher enters the game in the bottom of the eighth. His team leads by five. The bases are loaded. There are two out. Reliever comes in the game, strikes the batter out. Because his team is up by five, you would normally think, oh, okay, that's not a safe situation. But with the bases loaded, that means the tying run is on deck. So that does qualify as a save. Now let's keep it going. Say in the top of the ninth, his team bats around and they put five runs on the board. So now his team leads by 10 and he stays in the game. Pitches a 1-2-3 ninth with a 10-run lead. He still gets a save because the tying run was on deck when he entered the game in the bottom of the eighth. Oh, it gets better. He could even give up nine runs in the last inning. And guess what? He still gets the save because he entered the game in the bottom of the eighth with the tying run on deck. Here's another more realistic scenario, one that's happened many, many, many times and will happen many more times. Reliever enters the game with a three run lead in the top of the ninth, base is empty, gives up a hit and then gives up a two run home run. Then walks the bases loaded and strikes three guys out. He'll get a save. Even though it could be said, and it would be a very compelling case, that his team won in spite of him. To try and give credit to middle relievers, the statisticians have created the stat called the hold. I have a huge problem with the hold that I'm about to go over. First off, to get a hold, you have to come into the game in a save situation. It has to be a time where if you had finished the game, you would have received a save. But you were replaced. If, when you left the game, your team still had the lead, and you recorded at least one out, you get a hold. The problem I have with the hold is this. Let's say that you leave the game with runners on base. To you, those are called bequeathed runners. To the guy coming in, those are called inherited runners. But, the fact remains that you're the one responsible for those runners. So, say you leave the game bequeathing two runners to the next pitcher. And when you leave the game, your team is up by one. Then the next pitcher gives up a base hit that scores both runners. Because those runs are charged to you, if that lead holds, you would get the loss. So it is possible to get a hold and a loss at the same time. I have a problem with that. And the problem comes from what the hold actually looks at. The hold measures one thing. Did your team hold the lead? That's it. If you came into the game in a safe situation, got at least one person out, left the game, did your st team still have the lead? That's all it's looking for. It doesn't take into account whether the lead was narrower when you left than it was when you entered the game. It doesn't look at whether you left a mess behind for the next pitcher. 
All it looks at is the score on the scoreboard. Again, I have a problem with that. The solution to the holes left by both the save and the hold lies within the goose egg. Let's look at the qualifications Nate Silver made for a goose egg. This is straight from his webpage that details the goose egg, introduces the statistic, and states the reasoning behind his creation of the goose egg. It's a wonderful read. It's in the description box below this video. Here we go. I'm going to read it word for word. A relief pitcher records a goose egg for each inning in which it's the seventh inning or later. At the time the pitcher faces his first batter of the inning, his team leads by no more than two runs, or the score is tied, or the tying run is on base or at bat. None of that on deck stuff. On base or at bat. No runs, earned or unearned, are charged to the pitcher in the inning, and no inherited runners score while the pitcher is in the game. And... The pitcher either records three outs, one inning pitched, or records at least one out and the number of outs recorded plus the number of inherited runners totals at least three. So if the pitcher comes in with one out, there needs to be at least one runner on base. If the pitcher comes in with two out, there needs to be at least two runners on base. So either two on or the base is loaded. Now that we've shown the criteria for a goose egg and the criteria for a save, let's show the criteria for their negative counterparts. For a blown save, it's pretty simple. If you come into the game in a situation where if you were to pitch the rest of the game and hold the lead, you would get a save, but you lose the lead. You get a blown save. That's it. Doesn't matter if you came in in the fifth inning. Doesn't matter if you came in in the sixth inning. In a game that you would never finish, you would still get a blown save. Now the negative counterpart to the goose egg, the broken egg. If you enter a game and you're in a situation where if you had finished the inning and kept the lead and not had any runner score or anything, you would have had a goose egg. But instead, you give up an earned run and you don't finish the win for your team, you get a broken egg. If you give up an unearned run, or if you allow an inherited runner to score, or if you give up an earned run but still finish the win, you get a meh, which, as Nate Silver said, meh is not worth talking about much, so we're not going to really discuss it anymore. It's basically, in terms of chess, it's a stalemate. In addition, any situation that is a goose egg situation but doesn't result in either a goose egg or broken egg, also goes down as a meh. Let's take a look at a scenario that will demonstrate not only the problems with the save, hold, and blown save, but the superiority of the goose egg, broken egg, and meh. We're playing a game on the road. It's the bottom of the seventh inning. Our starter has pitched well, but has run into some trouble. The score is tied, the bases are loaded, and there's one out. To save the day, we bring in our lights out middle reliever, Charles, whom we discussed in the previous episode of this series, the episode introducing the scoreless outing percentage. Charles gets us out of the mess by getting the batter to ground into a double play. We go to the top of the eighth, don't score anything. In the bottom of the eighth, we bring in another reliever, David. David runs into some trouble, ends up walking in a run with the bases loaded. So now we are down a run going into the top of the ninth. Our team scores three runs. The manager brings me in now to close out the win with us leading by two. The leadoff batter hits a solo home run. I strike the next guy out. Then the next batter keeps the team alive by hitting a single. The batter after him also singles, sending the runner from first to third. Now we have runners on the corners, one out, and we're only ahead by one. I end up getting the batter to ground into a double play. Game over. Of the three relief pitchers, Charles is the one who did the most to help us win. However, under the save rules, I get a save, David gets the win, and Charles gets nothing. He doesn't even get a hold because we weren't ahead. We were tied. Looking at win probability will further illustrate how silly all this is because Charles 
increased our chances of winning by 23.6 percentage points. David, the winning pitcher, mind you, decreased our chances of winning or increased our chances of losing by 23.1 percentage points. Under the goose egg, however, Charles will deservedly get a goose egg. David will get a broken egg and I will escape with a meh because I ended up closing out the win for the team. If it weren't for that, I would get a broken egg too. That's a lot more fair. That was part of why Nate Silver created the statistic. He wanted to give credit to middle relievers because middle relievers can only get negatives. They can get a blown save, but there's no way they get a save because that's not their role. When looking at the goose egg, the most important statistic related to a goose egg is the ratio of goose eggs to broken eggs. The historical average, all the way back to 1921, is three to one, three goose eggs for every broken egg. And if you look at the league averages right now, they're around three to one. Every year, they're around three to one. Now, on my leaderboards, on my page, I have, at this point in the season, we're about 86 games into the season, I have made a minimum requirement that in order to be in the leaderboard for the goose egg to broken egg ratio, you must have at least eight goose eggs. You are still gonna be seeing some people whose ratio of goose eggs to broken eggs is infinite. One I can think of immediately off the top of my head is Diaz for the Reds. But most pitchers by now have given up at least one broken egg, the vast majority. Um, but there are some pitchers whose ratios are insanely high right now. There are pitchers right now on the leaderboard whose goose egg to broken egg ratio is in the 20s. Let's compare win probabilities for a reliever who enters the game in the ninth inning with the bases empty and a three-run lead, which is a save situation but not a goose egg situation, versus the maximum lead allowed for a goose egg, which is two runs. In a three-run game, the team with the lead in the ninth inning, if the bases are empty, has a 96.7% chance of winning the game. Hall of Fame reliever Rich Gossage said, anyone who can't hold that lead doesn't belong in the majors. With a two-run lead, the percent chance is 92.6%. Still very high. However, let's take a look at what certain hits will do to the chances of winning. In the ninth inning of a three-run game, if the leadoff hitter of the trailing team hits a single, his team's chances of winning increase by 3.8 percentage points. In a two-run game, same scenario, his team's chances of winning increase by 7.5 percentage points. So it's one-tenth of a percentage point shy of being twice as damaging. Now, same scenario, except the leadoff hitter of the trailing team hits a home run. In a three-run game, that increases his team's chances of winning by 4.1 percentage points. In a two-run game, that increases his team's chance of winning by 8.9 percentage points, so it's more than twice as damaging. So as you can see, in the ninth inning of a two-run game, hits by the trailing team are far more damaging than they are in the ninth inning of a three-run game. Furthermore, if the leadoff hitter gets on in a three-run game, then the tying run is still on deck. So two guys have to get on to even bring the tying run to the plate. However, in a two-run game, if the leadoff hitter gets on, now the tying run's at the plate. So the pitcher has very little margin for error. He gives up a home run, it's a tie game. There are several other reasons we could give for why a goose egg is superior to a save. If I listed them all, this video would go on for hours and it would take me even longer to get this prepared. So I prepared for you today the most condensed version I could give with the most compelling arguments out there for why the goose egg is superior to the save for measuring effectiveness of late inning relief. Thank you for watching this episode of Reliever Roundup and Bullpen Bonanza. Be sure to smash that like button, share this with your friends, subscribe to this channel, and click the notification bell so you can be notified anytime a new episode of this show or the others I produce goes up. Also be sure to check the description box for a link to the statistical tables and leaderboards for scoreless outing percentage, goose eggs, and the related statistics. These are updated daily, so you'll definitely want to stay on top of those. Also be sure to follow me on Twitter at L-W-O-S-Evan-T. 
Until next time, this is Evan Thompson, senior editor and Diamondbacks writer at Last Word on Baseball, saying so long for now. For the latest analysis from our staff of talented writers, be sure to check out lastwordonbaseball.com. And if you would like to write about your favorite team, scroll to the bottom and click Write for Us to fill out an application. lastwordonbaseball.com a member of the Last Word on Sports family of websites.